Good morning, everyone. The processional hymn this morning is number 657. Please be aware that the service this morning is going to be morning prayer and Eucharist, which is somewhat unusual, um, but you have your page numbers in the bulletin. All of the page numbers are in the bulletin. So uh, after the hymn, after the hymn, we will begin on page 78. If you want to open your Book of Common Prayer, we'll begin on page 78. Again, the first hymn this morning, I'm sorry, is number 657. And I apologize for interrupting our organist.
Good morning. This morning, as this is the first Sunday in the month of the Book of Common Prayer, we are going to be using the page numbers for the Book of Common Prayer, and we're also going to be using um, the service that is morning prayer and Eucharist. You might remember this service if you were an Episcopalian before 1959, I mean 1979, um, and you may not have heard it in a long time. So everyone today, whether you're a visitor or, a, you've been, or whether you've been here for 30 years, uh, we're all going to be look, finding our way through the Book of Common Prayer. So we're going to start today on page 78, um, and we'll move through there. And I will, you're, you have the page numbers here, but I will also be saying them aloud today. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. I'm going to use the traditional bidding so it comes before the actual confession. Dearly beloved, we have come together in the presence of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, to set forth his praise, to hear his holy word, and to ask for ourselves and on behalf of others those things that are necessary for our life and our salvation. And so that we may prepare ourselves in heart and mind to worship him, let us kneel in silence and with penitent and obedient hearts confess our sins, that we may obtain forgiveness by his infinite goodness and mercy. Please join me. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. And now continuing on page 80. Lord, open our lips. Glory to the Father and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. <coughs> Amen. Alleluia. At the very bottom of the page 81, the mercy of the Lord is everlasting. Come, let us adore him. Let's read together on page 82, the Vanity. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout to joy for Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his for he made it and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee and kneel before the Lord our Maker, for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. Let us read the psalm. Let us read the psalm together responsibly by whole verse. The psalm is found in the insert in your bulletin. Great is the Lord and highly to be praised. In the city of our God is his holy hill. The joy of all the earth is the hill of Zion, the very center of the world and the city of the great king. God is in her citadels. He is known to be her sure refuge. 
Behold, the kings of the earth assembled and marched forward together. They looked and were astounded. They retreated and fled in terror. As we have heard, so have we seen. In the city of the Lord of hosts, in the city of our God, God has established her forever. We have waited in silence on your loving kindness, O God, in the midst of your temple. Your praise, your praise like your name, O God, reaches the world's end. Your right hand is full of justice. Let Mount Zion be glad, and the cities of Judah rejoice because of your judgments. Make the circuit of Zion walk round about her. Count the number of her towers. Consider well her bulwarks. Examine her strongholds, that you may tell those who come after. This God is our God forever and ever. He, sh he shall, he shall be, be our guide forevermore. A reading from the second book of Samuel. All the tribes of Israel came to David at Hebron and said, Look, we are, at, we are your bone and flesh. For some time, while Saul was king over us, it was you who led out Israel and brought it in. The Lord said to you, It is you who shall be shepherd of my people Israel. You who shall be ruler over Israel. So all the elders of Israel came to the king at Hebron, and King David made a covenant with them at Hebron before the Lord, and they anointed David king over Israel. David was 33, 30 years old when he began to reign, and he reigned 40 years. At Hebron he reigned over Judah seven years and six months, and at Israel he reigned over at, at Jerusalem, he reigned over all Israel and Judah 33 years. David occupied the stronghold and named it the city of David. David built the city all around from the Milo inwards. And David became greater and greater for the Lord. The God of hosts was with him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please turn to page 90, and we will say together canticle number 13, Benedictus es Domine. Glory to you, Lord God of our fathers. You are worthy of praise. Glory to you. Glory to you for the radiance of your holy name. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Glory to you in the splendor of your temple. On the throne of your majesty, glory to you. Glory to you seated between the cherubim. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Glory to you beholding the depths in the high vault of heaven, glory to you. Glory to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. A reading from Paul's second letter to the Corinthians. I know a person in Christ who 14 years ago was caught up to the third heaven. Whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know. God knows. And I know that such a person, whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know. God knows. Was caught up into paradise and heard things that are not to be told that no mortal is permitted to repeat. On behalf of such a one, I will boast, but on my behalf, I will not boast, except my weaknesses. But if I wish to boast, I will not be a fool, for I will be speaking the truth. But I refrain from it, so that no one may think better of me than what is seen in me or heard from me, even considering the exceptional character of the revelations. Therefore, 
to keep me from being too elated, a thorn was given me in the flesh, a messenger of Satan to torment me, to keep me from being too elated. Three times I appealed to the Lord about this, that he would leave me. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for power is made perfect in weakness. So I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses, so that the power of Christ may dwell in me. Therefore, I am content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, and calamities for the sake of Christ. For whenever I am weak, then I am strong. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please turn to page 93 and we'll read together canticle number 18. Splendor and honor and kingly power are yours by right, O Lord our God. For you created everything that is, and by your will they were created and have their being. And yours by right, O Lamb that was slain, for with your blood you have redeemed for God from every family, language, people, and nation a kingdom of priests to serve our God. And so to him who sits upon the throne and to Christ the Lamb, be worship and praise, dominion and splendor forever and forevermore. Our sick... I'm sorry. Our sequ sequence hymn this morning is number 635. Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Lord Jesus, Jesus came to his hometown, and his disciples followed him. On the Sabbath, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many who heard him were astounded. They said, where did this man get all this? What is this wisdom that has been given to him? What deeds of power are being done by his hands? Is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary and brother of James and Joseph and Judas and Simon? And are not his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. Then Jesus said to them, Prophets are not without honor, except in their hometown and among their own kin and in their own house. And he could do no deed of power there, except that he laid his hands on a few sick people and cured them. And he was amazed at their unbelief. 
Then he went among the villages teaching. He called the twelve and began to send them out two by two and gave them authority over the unclean spirits. He ordered them to take nothing for their journey except a staff, no bread, no bag, no money in their belts, but to wear sandals and not to put on two tunics. He said to them, wherever you enter a house, stay there until you leave the place. If any place will not welcome you and they refuse to hear you, as you leave, shake off the dust that is on your feet as a testimony against them. So they went out and proclaimed that all should repent. They cast out many demons and anointed with oil many who were sick and cured them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Please be seated. Today is the third of these passages from Luke that, are set, that Luke has put together to show the kingship of Jesus Christ to his followers. And we have already read the first two, and today is the third one. <clears throat> so we have experienced, from Mark's point of view, the taming of the sea, which re is intended to remind us of creation and the chaos that God tames, um, and is, in Mark's mind, intended to remind us that Jesus is the, ki the king of creation. The king of creation. We're supposed to put together in our heads this description of the storm and relate that to the story of creation. And Jesus is the king of creation. In the second passage that we read last week, we had um, a woman who was healed of a terrible, situ a terrible disease, but a, all, also a terrible situation for her in her life. Um, and Jesus, in spite of the fact that she did so many things that would have concerned or upset anyone familiar with the law, things like talking to a man she didn't know or wasn't related to, trying to touch his clothes, and then falling down before him and speaking to him again, in spite of all of that, Jesus is really gentle in his healing of these people. Of, I'm sorry, of this woman. Very, very gentle. And he, he, with his words and his actions, he actually embraces her. Not with his arms. That would have been unheard of. But with his tone and his acceptance of her, he's very accepting of her. He embraces her with acceptance. And that shows us, in Mark's plan, that shows us that Jesus is king of life and law. And then today, we have Jesus in the synagogue teaching and all of these people who've known him since he was born are outraged. How could he, he grew up right here, right here with the rest of us. How could he know this stuff? Who is he to tell us what this means? I knew him when he was four. Even his relatives were like, who does he think he is? standing up in the synagogue and speaking for God? And then he sends his disciples out two by two into the world to take the message of Jesus Christ and the kingship of Christ into the world. He's actually sharing his authority with them. He's giving some of his kingly authority to his disciples. Only God has that kind of power. Only God has that kind of power. 
So here we are. We're all sitting here. We've all heard these stories before, lots of times. We don't know why Mark seems so intent upon teaching about the kingship of Christ to his own people, to his own congregation. I don't know if you know this, but all the Gospels are written by leaders of congregations, and they, they're writing down the story of Jesus' life for the people that they know. Now, the, the thing is about that, they're telling, all telling the same story in the Synoptic Gospels. I'm not talking about John, the other Gospels. They're all telling the same story. And there are lots and lots of similarities in the ways that they tell. But there are also some differences, and the differences are based on who they're talking to. A congregation at that time could have been people who had always been Jewish their whole lives, and there was no need to explain a Jewish tradition to them. There might be a congregation that is partly Jews, but also partly some of those other people. God, called, they were called God lovers. They had, never become, they had never actually been a Jew, and they weren't willing to do the things that you had to do to be a Jew, like be circumcised. They might have been all Gentiles in a congregation. This, the writing of the Gospels didn't happen the week after Jesus died. The writing of the Gospels happened between 50 and 100 years after Jesus died. So these groups of people have been together for a while. And their leaders know them. And they're talking to them specifically. And secondhand, they're talking to us. So the question that I have to say is why did we need to know this? As we sit here today in the 21st century, why do we need to know this? Well, as usual, I have a little quotation here, particularly about this gospel lesson. It's written by a man named Mark Eddington. There's a theology of discipleship here that brings Bonhoeffer to mind. We are warned against construing Mark's brief report of the disciples' initial foray as missionaries as a reward for their growing faith. It is rather a sign that faith brings authority. And authority brings responsibility. We respond to the gift of faith by accepting our authority alongside the sovereign to whom we answer. And we take up the responsibility of discipleship to proclaim, to heal, and to claim victory over evil. Who knew that's what they were supposed to be doing when they went out of the door of the church? That's a lot of asking. That's asking a great deal of us. When we read or think about or hear or talk about this passage, we're supposed to understand that we are those disciples who are being sent out. And if we have enough faith to be sent out, we will be able to do the things and accomplish the things that need to be done and accomplished in the name of Jesus Christ. Because with faith comes responsibility. Now, I don't know about you all. Maybe you have lots of words for talking about Christ to your friends. I remember thinking, right before I went to seminary, that it was a really good thing I was going to do that. Because I didn't have any words for talking about it. I thought of myself as a very faithful person, but I didn't have any confidence at all being called upon to pray out loud first, foremost, unless it was dinner time and I already knew those prayers. 
I also didn't have the confidence to talk about my faith and what I believed about Jesus Christ to strangers. And it's true that seminary helped me with those things. Um, I do them better now than I used to, but it's still difficult. And I hope that your presence here helps you find the words, helps you know the words, the way to express how you feel about Jesus to people you know and people you don't know, people you meet in a restaurant, people who you just might ask you if you go to church and what does your church believe? Leave that question quickly and go to what do you believe? Go to what do you believe? But we all need to have words for that. We need to practice here among ourselves. When we go to coffee hour, we could practice that. We could learn to talk to each other about Christ. We could learn to talk to each other about what it means when we say that Jesus is king of creation. All of us. Because each of us, with the faith we have that brought us here, with the faith we have that brought us here, every one of us in this place has a responsibility to tell that story. Every single one of us. So my prayer for you today is that when you leave this place, you'll be motivated to find some words and talk to someone. It could be your family, but if you take Jesus' experiences as an example, you might try a stranger. Uh, families are not so eager to hear new things from someone who uh, suddenly has a, a sense of authority. As, as it says in the gospel, not in my hometown or in my house. I have no authority here. Um, I doubt that any of us will rise above Jesus' authority, so maybe not at home. I ask you to pray also that all the other members of your church and your community here will be able to find that, um, that ease with their own authority. Learn to put on the authority that Christ has given us. Amen. We're going to continue with the creed, and this morning it's going to be the Apostles' Creed. Um, on page 96. There are actually three creeds that are acceptable for any service in the Episcopal Church. The third one, because we usually use the Nicene Creed, today is the Apostles' Creed. There is also a creed at the back of the book in tiny print called the Athanasian Creed. And if you ever would like to read it, good luck. You'll be really glad we use the, the Nicene Creed and it and the Apostles' Creed in our service. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Today, in the place of prayers of the people, we have suffrages A, which is found at the bottom of page 97. Show us your mercy, O Lord. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. Lord, keep this nation under your care. Let your way be known upon earth. 
Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Create in us clean hearts, O God. Lord God, almighty and everlasting Father, you have brought us to safety, in safety to this new day. Preserve us with your mighty power that we may not fall into sin nor be overcome by adversity. And in all that we do, direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The collect of the day is found at the very top of your insert, the first thing on the insert. O oh God, you have taught us to keep all your commandments by loving you and our neighbor. Grant us the grace of your Holy Spirit that we may be devoted to you with our whole heart and united to one another with pure affection. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, you've given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us. Granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. have lost my papers. How interesting. Here we go. Sorry. That that last prayer is a is a collect after the prayers after all of our prayers asking God to listen to us. And, and to consider answering our prayers. <laughs> it's called um, the Prayer of St. Of Chrysostom. And it's a really well-known prayer. You'll come across it in other places. And it's a very great prayer to use um, for when somebody if, asks you to finish, you know, to ask prayers on behalf of a meeting or something like that. It's a lovely prayer. It's the Prayer of St. Chrysostom. The peace of the Lord be always with you. God's peace, peace still. John, God's peace. Nancy, peace. Welcome back. Peace be with you. Pass it down, please. Peace be with you. God's peace. Will you pass that down for me, please? Peace be with you. The peace of the Lord be with you. God's peace, June. Could you pass that to Pam for me, please? Peace be with you. Oh, thank you. Peace be with you. God's peace. Peace to all the music people. <laughs> peace be with you. Peace be with you. Can you pass that down, please? Pass the peace down. Peace be with you. Pass it on. I do have more than announcements today. I would like to thank all of you who participated in the Labyrinth Walk on Saturday. This morning is a special morning. Um, first, I'd like to ask Kendall Babb to come up here. Please. Come on, Kendall. It's so nice to see you. Come on. Uh, all the way up. Come on. So Kendall graduated from high school, and um, and Kendall is on her way to UNC, and that's not far, um, but it's a big step, and um, with all kinds of unknowns ahead of her, and we want to wish her the very best. Um, I hope that we will see you sometime and find out how you're doing. Um, we have some gifts from the church. 
um, a variety of gifts. Some time ago, a member of the church left money to the church specifically designated um, to give a small cash gift to people who are on their way to college. And so we have this for you. Oh my goodness, you're so welcome. We also have this really lovely little album of pictures of you at church. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and I hope you love it because I loved it. Oh my gosh. Uh, we also have um, a beautiful uh, winter, winter scarf in UNC color. And it was knitted by the knitting group here with love and, and prayers as they were knitting. And there's some notes in here to you, so please don't overlook them. Um, and I'd like to offer that to you. And this is a Book of Common Prayer that we have for you. I'm sorry, but it didn't get here in time to get your name on it, so if, I'm going to give it to you. But if you will leave it with me when you leave okay. today, I'll have your name on it and call you back to get it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank well, you. we really love you. Stay here. Don't, don't go back to your seat. One of the things that Kendall is going to do before she goes to college is she's going to the RSCM Carolina Choral Residency Program at Duke. And uh, she's going to be singing in Duke <laughs> Chapel. And she's going to be accompanied there by Marley Nelson. Come on. <laughs> Caroline Babb. And some of our adult choir, Robin Arcus. <laughs> Joan, Joan Hodges. And Wendy Cook. And I want to thank you all for the effort that you're making uh, to enhance and grow the gifts that God's given you that you use so in such a lovely way here to enhance our worship at St. Luke's. So I have a little blessing for each of you. Wishing you well. Have a wonderful week. Come home and sing for us. May the Lord be with you on your way. Thank you very much for coming up here and receiving a blessing, and um, we'll see you at the end of the week and hear how it was. Thank you. Thank you. My pleasure. We have one other um, set of blessings. Kay Saunders, I think everyone is familiar, knows Kay pretty well, and David Martin who are going to the Swanee Church Music Conference in Tennessee, in Swanee, Tennessee. I think that's called the hill, right? The mountain, I'm sorry, the only mountain, right. The holy and only mountain. <laughs> okay, bless you. The Lord bless you and keep you, make his face to shine upon you. David, the Lord bless you and keep you, make his face to shine upon you. And I wish you all both the very best. And thank you for doing that for yourselves, for the enhancement of God's gift, and for our church. Thank you. Ascribe to the Lord the honor due his name, bring offerings, and come into his courts.
Please turn to page 361 in the Book of Common Prayer. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on the first day of the week overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection open to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself, and when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all, who stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God, take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven, the blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The 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 body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Okay, let me give you each other's and thank you. We're taking the break. Thank you. Give it to each other. I'll get you a cup. body of Christ, the bread of heaven, the body of Christ, the bread of heaven, the body of Christ, the bread of heaven, Maggie, the body of Christ, the bread of heaven, Marley, the body of Christ, the bread of heaven, the body of Christ, the bread of heaven, the body of Christ, the bread of heaven, the body of Christ, the bread of heaven.
of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen.
Atlanta on the church worship schedule. I'm really busy. Yeah, we're just 14 to nothing, but 21st, healing, 28th, live stream, August 4th, healing, 25th, which is a few weeks, the new session, and healing, major live stream, and healing. Maybe double check. I like to make a notation of when I cancel things somewhere so they can't bill me again. Oh. Should I shred these things? These documents? You have a shredder. Yeah. In other words, yes. Yeah. Use it. <laughs> 